Hello everyone, welcome back. This is uh, the seventh module on reliability based structural design. In this module, we are going to discuss second order reliability method. And in this uh, module, we have two different topics. The first one is Breitung's model that we are going to discuss today. Now, in our first order reliability analysis, we started with a limit state, which is shown by this pink line on your screen. And then this nonlinear limit state was replaced by this blue line, which is a linear approximation of the original limit state. Now, our main objective was to find out the point on this blue line, which is nearest to the origin in the standard normal space. And for that, we used a gradient based approach and the iterative solution was based on Lagrange multiplier technique. Now, the moment we replace the original nonlinear limit state with a linear limit state, we invariably incorporate some amount of error when we estimate beta and subsequently probability of failure. Now, this modeling error we are going to improve in second order reliability method where uh, we will see how the curvature of this original limit state affects the estimation and what is its impact on the reliability analysis. So, we start with a limit state function and that limit state function we expand using Taylor series which is an infinite series. So, we use a reference point in this case say x star and with respect to this point we expand this function and on the right hand side we have an infinite series that we truncate depending upon the model that we use. So, in case of first order reliability analysis we consider first two terms that means we consider up to the first derivative of g with respect to the variables xi and then we use that model for further estimation of beta. In case of second order approximation, we consider up to second derivative terms. So, the first three terms on the right hand side we consider in this model and how this curvature in the third term on the right hand side with respect to basic variables affect the estimation of uh, probability of failure that is the central theme of this discussion. Now, obviously, what we can expect if the curvature is very low, that means a first order approximation of the original limit state is fine, then in that case, uh, this uh, second order approximation will not contribute much, but as the curvature increases, obviously, the effect of curvature on the reliability analysis will be more pronounced and in that case, uh, we have to go for a better estimation of beta and subsequently probability of failure and hence we need this second order reliability model. Now, in the first order appro approximation you can see on your screen, so we consider first two terms and then after this mathematical manipulation what we get is effectively beta in this compact form. Now, if you recall, uh, we use direction cosines as you can see on your screen which is alpha i and then the new design point z star can be expressed in terms of direction cosines and the reliability index beta. Now, in this second order approximation what we do, we start with this nonlinear limit state given by this pink line but instead of this linear approximation we opt for a better approximation which is you can see on your screen by this dotted line. Obviously, the main objective of this uh, modification of failure estimation is to incorporate this curvature when we estimate the reliability index. The question is how we can incorporate this curvature in our estimation and for that what we do, we rotate this uh, z-axis so that the Zn, in this case we have two dimensions, that means n equal to 2, so Z2 
in the prime coordinate coincides with the beta. And for that, we use a transformation. So, Z prime is nothing but R times Z and that will further simplify this expression and what we get is Z prime is nothing but equal to beta. And obviously, as I said earlier, if the limit state function is linear or close to linear, obviously the first order approximation uh, gives us um, more or less accurate result. But as we go for nonlinear limit state where the curvature is uh, uh, more pronounced, in that case, uh, obviously truncation error will incorporate large amount of error in estimation of beta. Now, in the second order approximation, obviously, we consider one extra term on the right hand side and where we have this second derivative of g with respect to the variables in this case z. Now, obviously, in this uh, representation, g of z star, where z star is the new design point, at this point, g of z star is 0. And not only that, this second derivative of g with respect to z in the third term, that is the extra term in this second order approximation, this is a symmetric matrix. And if we use these notations, we can further simplify the expression in this compact matrix form. Now, the moment we introduce this transformation z prime equal to r times z, then we can further simplify this expression and then ultimately what we get is z n prime is nothing but beta which comes from the first order approximation plus the extra term which is now there in the second order approximation. Now in this format, obviously the way we rotate the axis z prime is nothing but all 0 and the last component is beta because that is how it is um, oriented in the new prime coordinate system. And this A matrix which is nothing but a diagonal matrix. When we will uh, go for examples, we will also see this further. Now, our main objective is to find out this probability. So, we find out the probability when g of z and beta is less than 0. gz less than 0 actually defines failure. So, this function in the standard normal space is governed by the multivariate standard normal distribution and the moment we integrate this multivariate standard normal distributions where this limit state function is less than 0, we effectively estimate the probability of failure. Now obviously, the right hand side of this expression is having a multidimensional standard normal variate. And for that, we have different approximations. So, when we have linear approximations, so we replace this limit state function with a linearized limit state. And even for that, our main objective is to estimate the probability of failure for this condition. Obviously, when we go for quadratic approximation, we have up to second order term and the ultimate expression for the probability of failure is again the same. The only difference is in this case, the domain is defined by the dotted line as you can see on your screen and based on that, we evaluate the multivariate uh, standard normal distribution to estimate the probability of failure. Now, for that, we need some mathematical tool to estimate this probability of failure and in this case, we have to use asymptotic integral. So, before we discuss Brightum's model and how we can estimate this probability of failure, first let us go through the asymptotic approximation of multinormal integrals and then uh, we will see how this is related to our problem and how we can use this information for our reliability estimation. So, the asymptotic expansion is given by this form where it has a domain which is having n variables. So, it is uh, n dimensional space and then we have these two functions fx and f0x which are twice differentiable. 
obviously the domain has a boundary which is defined by x and fx has no global maxima inside the domain d obviously the asymptotic behavior of this i of lambda depends on the boundary where fx attains its global maximum. Therefore, if we apply Lagrange multiplier theorem, then we get this condition first differential of fx will be k times delta of hx where k is a constant. So effectively what we have to do, we have to integrate this left hand side over this domain d and for that we have some uh, standard results for asymptotic approximations. Now in this case, as the problem states that there is only one point x0 on the surface g of x equal to 0, just note that this beta equal to 1 in this case and this single point x0 on the surface is where fx achieves its optimum. So from this statement, we can actually correlate this with our reliability problem. In our reliability problem, we have a limit state function g of z in the standard normal space where we have a point z star where uh, we have the optimal distance. Now this asymptotic integral is given by this expression, what you can see on your screen. Now we will use this expression to evaluate the multivariate standard normal distribution. So, this is the expression for asymptotic expansion and because we have our coordinate system, this modulus of x0 square, so this is equal to 1 as per our definition. Recall we use beta equal to 1. So, we get this expression for the asymptotic expansion. Now, the only task in this expression to evaluate is this Jacobian matrix. So the Jacobian matrix is defined by this expression and then uh, where this B matrix is also defined, the it is the elements of this matrix is defined by this expression where there is a cofactor term and this G i j is the second derivative of g with respect to the variables in this case xi and xg. So our task is to find out this determinant of b matrix and it is given by the product of the eigenvalues of b matrix which is again having this form and the roots of these expressions are 1 minus kappa i. So these kappa i's are basically the eigenvalues of B matrix. So as the problem says that we have this 1 minus kappa j or kappa i. So as the problem states that we have the roots which are 1 minus kappa i which are the eigenvalues of B matrix then we can estimate this uh, j which is having this expression. Now this kappa j are basically the principal curvatures of the failure surface at x0 and this curvature is positive for convex failure surface and since we have x0 which is a point on the surface with minimum distance to the origin the principal curvature at x0 must not be larger than unity. There is a proof, we are not going through this proof for the time being, but ultimately the this condition which gives a simplified form of this Jacobian matrix in this format. So now coming back to the Breitung's approximation where we use asymptotic integral. So we have the main objective is to e evaluate this probability and as per definition we are in the z space. Obviously this probability is governed by the multivariate 
standard normal distribution and we have to integrate this function where this limit state is less than 0. And if we substitute x1, x2 up to xn to z1, z2 up to zn, which actually leads to this expression, then further we can uh, simplify this estimation of probability of failure. And what you can see on your screen is the final expression. Note that the limit state function gx with independent standard normal variables having only one MPP. So, the asymptotic integral expression that we discussed earlier, now we can use to evaluate this uh, probability of failure. Now, as per our expression that we discussed earlier, if we just uh, extend that for this uh, estimation of the multidimensional integral here, we get this expression for um, probability of failure. Then again, in this case, j, this gradient is independent of beta and depending solely on the first two derivatives of the failure surface that we have seen in our earlier slides. So, ultimately what we can see from this expression, the second order probability of failure can be approximated using the first part is phi of minus beta that we get from the first order reliability analysis times this mod of j to the power minus 1 by 2. So, this expression actually comes from the asymptotic integral and that was first proposed by Carl Breitung. So, we call this uh, second order reliability analysis as per Breitung's model. Now, we have a single MPP that we have stated at the very beginning. So, in this case, the probability of failure can be further simplified because we have already derived the expression for this j using asymptotic integral. So, we finally have this expression where we have the estimation of probability of failure as per second order reliability method. What you can see on the right hand side is the first part phi of minus beta is the probability of failure estimated by first order reliability method and then we have a correction term to incorporate the curvature of the nonlinear limit state function. So, we have the expression for probability of failure as proposed by Carl Breitung. So, it uses parabolic approximations. So, we consider up to quadratic terms and it does not use a general second order approximation. It ignores the mixed terms in the Taylor series expansion. The second uh, approximation in this uh, theory is that it is accurate only for large value of beta. This I have already explained because if the effect of curvature is not prominent, obviously this uh, additional component coming from the curvature will not contribute much over the first order reliability analysis. And in that case, probability of failure uh, will be accurately captured by the first order model itself and hence we do not need this correction. But if we have a highly nonlinear limit state where uh, we have significant impact of curvature, in that case, uh, this correction term will contribute much and we will see more in detail as we go to the examples. So, there are some key features of this um, model. Let us go through one by one. In this model, first we start with a limit state function where we employ first order reliability analysis and we estimate beta and MPP. Then, this estimation of probability of failure is further modified considering the curvature for that we estimate the principal curvatures in and around MPP and it is not valid if this condition is satisfied and also does not work well for negative curvatures. 
So the principal curvature kappa j is obtained by rotating this z in a new prime coordinate system so that the final variable zn in this case you have two dimensions so z2 prime coincides with the beta. So that algorithm for this Breitung's model starts with the step one where we construct this rotational matrix R which is computed in two steps. A matrix R0 is constructed first based on the direction cosines evaluated from the form. So this direction cosines alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha n, we get it from our first order reliability analysis. So we construct this R0 matrix. Then we employ Gram-Smead orthogonalizations on this R0 matrix to get this R matrix. For that, again the expression uh, is given on your screen. So this is the expression for constructing the R matrix. So using this Gram-Smead orthogonalization, we construct R matrix from R0 that we get from our first order reliability analysis. Then we go to step 2. Using R, we evaluate A matrix and the expression is given on your screen where this D matrix contains the second derivative of the limit state function in the standard normal space. This is actually the addition in the Taylor series expansion that we have discussed at the very beginning. Then we rotate this z axis into z prime axis so that this zn coincides with beta and for that this is the expression and the additional term comes from the second order terms in the Taylor series expansion. Then A matrix is reduced and the eigenvalues are computed to estimate the primary curvature. For that what we do in this A matrix we drop the last row and column and then uh, the remaining part of the A matrix is used. We compute the principal curvature kappa. Then in the third step we use this kappa to estimate the probability of failure and for that we have this expression and the origin of this expression is also explained because in the second order approximation we need to evaluate multivariate standard normal uh, distribution and the probability of failure is governed by the region where g of z is less than or equal to 0 and that is the genesis of this expression where we employ asymptotic integral. And then finally, beta corresponding to sum can be found out from this expression. So we take the phi inverse because phi of minus beta is pf. So on the left hand side we have pf from sum. So obviously beta of sum will be minus of phi inverse pf of sum. So that is the algorithm we have for Breitung's model. So with that, let us uh, go through some examples and see how we can employ this uh, mathematical tool to estimate the probability of failure more accurately. So we start with a same example. We have solved this earlier also. We have a camp cantilever beam with a point load at the free end and the gx is given by this fy times z minus n. So we consider the moment at the support and then using that we construct the limit state function. Now in this case we have two random variables fy and z whose parameters are given here and z is following normal distribution while fy is following log normal distributions. And obviously we have already solved this first order reliability analysis and from that we have these results which we discussed earlier. So we know MPP. In this case, the last two rows actually shows us the MPP in the original space and the limit state once we convert it into Z space also you can see on your screen. 
Now, because we have a non-normal distribution, we have to employ equivalent normal uh, model. So you can see this sigma z superscript capital N actually the equivalent normal standard deviation and also we have equivalent normal mean. So these are the equivalent normalization of the variable which is following log normal distribution. Now, we start with the construction of R0 matrix. So, there we have the last row as the direction cosines that we obtain from our first order reliability analysis. And then, using the expression we earlier discussed using Gram's mead orthogonalization, we can construct this R matrix that you can see on your screen. Now, once we have that, our next task is to construct the D matrix, which is having the second order differential of G with respect to the random variables we have. So, in this case, we can easily evaluate this matrix and that you can see on your screen. And then once we put the values using uh, standard deviations in this case, then we finally get the D matrix. And the complete details you can see on the right hand side. So what we do, we have this original function. We find out the MPP using first order reliability method. And then we rotate the axis so that the last coordinate actually coincides with beta. Then once we have R and D, our next task is to evaluate the A matrix. And that's the expression is given here. So we can construct the A matrix following different elements given by this small a i j. So we have the components of this also explained here. So you can uh, check yourself all these expressions and finally we get the A matrix. Once we get the A matrix, then uh, we can uh, estimate the probability of failure using by Brightung's approximation. And for that, uh, our task is to find out first the principal curvatures and that in this case we have two dimensions. So we have one kappa value and that you can see on your screen. And the moment we have that, we can estimate the probability of failure using Brightung's model. And that's what is shown here. Now, sometimes this PF2 is used for um, probability of failure as per second order reliability method because we consider second order term this subscript 2 comes. So PF2 means probability of failure as per second order reliability analysis. So what you can see on your screen is the estimation based on the principal curvature that we estimate at the MPP. So this table on the right hand side actually shows the impact of uh, curvature on the estimation of beta and probability of failure. Obviously, first we solve the problem using first order reliability method and there the value of beta is 5.059 and the moment we incorporate the impact of curvature, you can see the correction over this estimation using first order reliability analysis and that is also reflected in the estimation of probability of failure. So that shows step by step how we can incorporate Brightung's model to estimate the probability of failure considering the effect of curvature. So let us consider a second problem. In this case, again, this problem we have solved earlier. We have a rectangular reinforced concrete beam. So you can see the details of this uh, beam here given. And in this case, uh, the size of the beam is given 300 millimeter by 450 millimeter. It is subjected to a moment where the effective cover is 50 millimeter. M20 concrete is used along with Fe 415 steel and the limit state function you can see on your screen. In this case, we have three random variables, the applied moment, 
then xu that is the location of the neutral axis from the top surface and then fsc so what we do we first again convert this gx into gz that is a very standard procedure and i solve the first order reliability method so this result earlier we solved and the same result is shown here so we have the design point which is the mpp in this case and the estimation of beta in this case is 4.2823 so again in this case we construct the r not matrix using the direction cosines that we get from the first order reliability analysis the moment we get this r not matrix then again using gram smith orthogonalization we construct this r matrix which you can see on your screen then our next task is to evaluate the d matrix which comes from the second derivative of this function in the z space so we have the expression in the z space so if we differentiate it twice with respect to zi we get this d matrix then once we have this r and d our next task is to find out the a matrix which you can see on your screen so now we have the a matrix and then from this we can actually evaluate the principal curvature and then once we get the principal curvature then we can estimate the probability of failure as per brightung's model so again the complete uh, results are summarized here so first order reliability method gives an estimate of 4.2823 which is further modified in the second order estimation which is 4.2808 so in this model we have the correction coming from the curvature and we can also see the impact on the probability of failure so from first order reliability method to second order we can see the changes in the probability of failure okay so let us further uh, consider a different problem so in this case we have a second order limit state so it's an equation of a circle this problem also earlier we solved and in this case we have two random variables x1 and x2 and both of them are normal with mean 0 and 5 as sorry mean 10 and 5 uh, as the standard deviation so let us investigate what is the impact of this uh, curvature on this uh, on the estimation of beta and pf so first again we transform the limit state into standard normal space and then we solve the first order reliability problem and the result you can see on your screen so we have the design point which is 3 3 in this case at this point we have the alpha so we can easily construct this r not matrix using the direction cosines that we get from the first order reliability model mm -hmm. then we can employ gram smith orthogonalization to construct this r matrix and the moment we have this gz we can differentiate with respect to z1 and z2 and we have in this case capital d matrix then once we have r and d we can find out the estimate of a matrix and you can see on your screen uh, the a matrix here then what we do we find out the principal curvature in this case we have two dimensions so we have one kappa so that value also we can see and then finally we estimate the probability of failure using brightung's model so in this case probability of failure is 0.0131 now the complete result is again summarized and you can see we started with a second order linear sorry second order li limit state and then first we solve using first order approximation that means we linearize this limit state in and around mpp and the estimation of uh, beta was 1.9799 and the moment we consider the impact of curvature you can see the beta is significantly improved and that is also reflected 
in the estimation of probability of failure. Because in this case, we have a highly nonlinear limit state, you can see the impact of curvature on the estimation of beta. So we have another problem where again we have a limit state. In this case it is x1 to the power 5 plus x2 to the power 5 minus 18. And again x1 and x2 are also following normal distribution with mean 10 and standard deviation 5. So in the earlier problem we had a second order limit state. Now the nonlinearity has increased. So again, in this case, we first solve using first order reliability method and the estimation of beta is 1.2626. And you can also see the estimation of direction cosines. So we have alpha 1 and alpha 2, you can see on your screen. And the design point also is given here. Now the moment we have this, we can construct R0 matrix, which is given here. And then from this R0 matrix, we can construct R which is the rotation matrix and the D matrix for this case again we can estimate from the expression of GZ and once we have this estimation of R and D then we can find out A matrix using the expression you can see on your screen. So we have the A matrix and then for that we can estimate the principal curvature in this case the kappa 1 is 1.3416 and the moment we have it we can estimate the probability of failure as per second order reliability method. So in this case, again, the results is summarized in the table. So you can see beta form is 1.2626. And the moment we consider the curvature, and because we have a nonlinear limit state, the estimation of beta is significantly changed. So we have in this case, beta is 1.5302. And the impact on probability of failure also we can notice from the results. So the PF form is 0.10337 while the same estimation for second order reliability model is 0.0630. So from this example, what we can see is that the moment we have a nonlinear limit state and the impact of nonlinearity on the estimation of the probability of failure. As the nonlinearity increases, some second order reliability method gives a better result because we consider the effect of curvature in the estimation of uh, probability of failure. And as per this Brightung's model, we use asymptotic integral and we use that standard result for the estimation of beta, which is a correction over the first order reliability method. So first we estimate the first order reliability method, then we estimate the correction term as per asymptotic integral and together these two gives us the accurate estimation of the probability of failure considering the effect of curvature that is always there in case of a nonlinear limit state. So with that, uh, let us move forward with our last example where we consider a linear limit state. Obviously, before we solve, we can expect that the estimation of first order and second order reliability methods will be same. So in this case, we have g of x1, x2, which is 3x1 minus 2x2. And we have two random variables x1 following normal distribution with mean 16.5 and standard deviation 2.45. x2 is also log normal and the sample mean is 18.5 and sample standard deviation is 2.8. In this case, the covariance between x1 and x2 is 2. So obviously, we have a most general case, but we have a linear limit state. So we can solve this problem using first order reliability method and the result you can see on your screen. So beta in this case is 1.9799. And we have corresponding alpha 1, alpha 2 and the final design point x1 and x2. Obviously, using this information, we can construct R matrix. And then from R, we can construct the 
So using this information of alpha 1 and alpha 2, we can construct R0 matrix and from that R0 matrix, we can construct this R matrix using Gram-Smith orthogonalization. And again, from the expression of GZ in the standard normal space, we can calculate the D matrix. And in this case, you can see because we have a linear limit state function, the D matrix is zero. Obviously, the A matrix will also be zero in this case. And then there is no impact on the probability of failure because the principal curvature is also zero in this case. And the results you can see summarized in this table. So we have beta form which is 1.5998 and when we apply Breitung's model again we get the same beta which is due to the fact that this is a linear limit state obviously there will be no improvement over beta and which is also reflected in the numerical values. So as we saw in the earlier problem if we have a limit state with nonlinear functions and the more and more we have uh, the nonlinearity, the impact of curvature will be more prominent on the estimation of probability of failure and beta when we employ second order reliability method. But if we have a linear limit state, obviously there is no need for additional corrections and the first order reliability estimation gives an accurate result. So, with that, let us conclude our discussion on Breitung's model. In our next class, we will continue our discussion on second order reliability methods and we will see how uh, we can use other methods for the similar problems. Thank you very much.